became the king and queen of Gotham City. Warp drive active. We finally meet. Nah, uh, he don't shake hands. Sit down and have a drink. Hey, Jay. On behalf of everybody, welcome back. I wanted to come by and personally say thank you. You're making me good money. Making you good money. Are you sweet talking me? Ah, ah, ah. I love this guy. <laughs> He's so intense. Mm, you're a lucky man. Met a bad bitch. Oh, there she is. The fire in my loins. The itch in my crotch. The one, the only, the infamous Harley Quinn. Listen, you are my guests to this handsome hunka hunka. You belong to him now. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> You're cute. You want me? I'm all yours. <laughs> I don't want no beef. You want no beef? You don't want Why, no beef? Wrong? You don't want no beef? You don't like me? Fine, don't waste my time then. This is a lady. Look, are you enjoying yourself? Oh. Presented by the Dark Network. Network. This, this is, is New Eden. Eden. An anomaly even within the Dark Network. Network. Ever since the dawn of aviation, Mankind has looked to the skies with hopeful expectation of conquering the stars. Beyond the remnants of the shattered the gate, a universe of impossible splendor lies among an endless sea of stars. Cosmos, the sounds that echo through every corner of the universe. This is New Eden FM. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Season of Square, as well as the new Eden FM radio show, your weekly update on all things Eve, as well as your weekly uh, dance party, apparently. This is Maestro apologizing to you guys for being a little bit late today. No, I'm not hungover, as it turns out, uh, being a corporation um, a leader actually includes work. Who would have thought? Um, and of course, I have my wing peoples in the studio with me. Weapons Armament Master Latara, please tell us how you are doing today, my good friend. I mean, Locate I, I, I almost uh, fell asleep in the meeting we just attended. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's that. This is what this is what happens when FCs are also um, are also corporation uh, leadership. You get that. It's all this talking around subjects. And it's like, can't we just kill something instead? I know, right? I mean, but it's just... But no, it's, it's really what kills me is the fact that we're talking about the nature of how we're going to kill something. They're then actually doing it. So it's like we've, we've gone from being a lowly pirate organization where we're just killing stuff, you know, all willy-nilly and everything. Now it's organized crime because these are planned murders. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can get behind that to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Commander Alandria of the Galaxy. This is the original copy, correct? Uh, yes, that's the story we're going to go with this week. Oh, that's the story we're going with this week? Okay, I know you've been... A very... I, I can, can I, I, yes, this is very highly OPSEC. I cannot this week confirm which copy of me is in the studio, but there is, in fact, a copy of me in the studio. There's a couple of me lurking in the uh, lounge as well, as well as uh, 
uh, everywhere. We're, we're, we are everywhere this morning. Very, very, very busy this morning. Whole coalition thing going on and everything. And, uh, got a beautiful site picked out and, and show on the edge of Providence because uh, nobody seems to hear much from Providence. So I figure we bring the show to this this morning. But nice and Ooh, safe and near hard, Providence. So. You know, I'm yes, pretty sure that are, Providence are... probably messes me because before we uh, we got into this void with Vor, I was paying them weekly visits. Well, I mean, if you come to the show and hang out with us, you're right on the edge of Provi space when we get done. So <laughs> you can go say hi. <laughs> Let's hurry get the Batmobile. <laughs> okay. Uh, my AP is already set. Jeez, man. There you I'm... go. We yeah, we are in Kari, yeah, so. so yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It's a. It's a. It's a high sec system right on the edge of uh, null sec because you jump right into Proppy space whenever yeah, you leave. Course. So, it's just really cool. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna get the fleet. <laughs> on today's show, New Eden News. How is your alliance doing in the Great Facts Race 2022? The Contents Creators Corner. Do you like murder, brand new killbot, and the state of the war? Thought it was over, kinda, not really. But first, in the mix, this is So Fresh, So Clean by Outcast. Turn it up. Check this is your weekly update on all things is echoes and hit online. New Eden News. Welcome, my friends, to New Eden News. And I mean, oh. What's interesting is that this week was kind of a slow one, but I guess that they, the devs really do deserve to have a bit of a slow one where all they have to do is just turn off the game for a little while, do some market transaction adjustments, which we know they're, they're going to do, and uh, turn it back on for everyone. So this week we didn't get a weekly developer Q&A, and we also didn't get um, get any fancy patch notes. Or I mean, they've been pretty tight-lipped about the whole thing, but that's fine because on last week, we got the colossal new uh, drop for two capital ships, not only jump freighters, which they said last year or the year before that, I'm not sure which, because it all starts to blend together after a while. They said that we weren't going to get jump freighters, but lo and behold, we got jump freighters. And, um, and interestingly enough, there are already certain enterprising individuals in a, in a pirate alliance that are already using the jump freighters, isn't that right, Ron? Um, yes, we we've. I don't know why. In terms of resource allocation, I wouldn't think it's the wisest. But our pilots are, are certainly very entrepreneurial and adventurous in their builds, and uh, we, we we have got a number of these jump freighters, and they're, they're quite fun to use. Actually, it's it's going to facilitate logistics uh, around Newton very significantly, especially for large alliances, as in terms of resource allocation, whether it's worth it for the price that they have right now, I don't know if it's worth it, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun ship to use uh, and to freight around, yes, for sure. Yes. I mean, um, <clears throat> legend has it that there were a couple of those um, moving around certain areas that they probably were supposed to collect these things that they probably should not have been collecting, but hey, you know, that's, that's kind of, um, that's the fun of having a jump freighter rather than a normal freighter. You don't have to go gate to gate. And um, it, it feels kind of to me like the, the, the older freighters, they really have diminished value at this point. I mean, there's a reason why people don't really build those in EVE Online anymore. Yeah, jump freighters, uh, like having used both at this stage, I mean, so in terms of no, we've we've, got, we've had a significant track record of doing hostile and tosis. Part of it being kind of like our industry. Uh, I think we've we've owned quite a lot of part of the structure part in this game, and it's been because of host antosis. So moving out of regions with uh, freighters, it's a very arduous and boring and laborious process in which there's risk involved. Uh, you can be killed easily. These freighters, some of them are not as chunky as people think, and just that slow. It's very slow. Um, so jump freighters just make everything significantly easier because you've got seven um, LYs of, of distance which gives you a massive range for uh, for jumping around. The only issue right now in terms of um, net ease is that they haven't coded the jump fatigue reduction which means that you're still accruing fatigue uh, for jumps like a, like a conventional cap you know. Um, I guess the Rourke will probably had that issue at the beginning and it was coded properly and then it had release reduction because I still think the Rourke will has uh, minus 90 percent but here it doesn't. Um, but it's still fantastic ship in terms of just uh, moving resources, as I mentioned before. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely 100% would agree that uh, it makes freighters quite uh, 
a useless ship and it's probably good chance for people to because I think you can use freighters to build a jump freighter now right if I'm not mistaken or is it BPs yeah, you, you have you have to use a uh, existing freighter oh. in the build for a jump freighter so it's very okay. nice so, so they're basically recycling the old jump freighters and turning them into um, are they recycling the old freighters and turning them into jump freighters which is really cool yeah it's just exp it's expensive though like right now I don't know how many there are like probably just two three um of which i think no owns two um they're, actually, they're gonna be tough to catch as well uh, with the fact that they jump around yeah no no 100 percent. unless unless well again it some, requires some sort of strategy about how you're jumping them around right because these things don't they don't have any low like they don't have a low slots high slots mid slots you're, you're tackled you can't mute it's really not much you can do like uh, you're just like what's massive brink in middle space right so i guess there's yeah. some strategy involved in that um and how you move them around but certainly uh repro but as i said before sorry they're, they're very right now they're just very expensive in terms of that they're probably going for like somewhere in between 50 to 70 billion which is uh i don't know it's not very affordable in my eyes at least no, I mean, I completely understand what you're saying. And every time they drop a new um, a new capital ship into the game, it's more expensive than the last capital ship. Um, with I, I kind of understood it when it came to the Roracle. And the reason why is because with the Roracles, Roracles are kind of sort of... When you think of a Roracle in EVE Online, you think of a Roracle at the same way, in the same way you think of a Titan, right? It's a, a very, very large ship, and it's the top of its class. There is no industry ship after the Roracle on the tree. Once you get there, you know you're you're there where you need to where you need to be. And so, um, and so, it with with Eve Echoes, I understood that for the Roracles. With some of the other ships, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, jump freighter services are are a part of of Eve Online culture where. Um, occasionally, people in your uh, in your alliance will uh, will offer you jump freighter services when you need to move things around or get something from like Jita, which is really important. If you're one of those people who, like me, isn't like a mega boxer, where you can afford to have clones that are, you know, not in your alliance or just like new clones that just float around high sec for you. So getting in and out of null sec is is kind of it's a little bit tedious, and so you will pay someone to jump freighter this for you because there's no really uh, no real efficient way to get things in and out, especially during a war when people war deck you and they can shoot you outside of uh, outside of Jita's uh, or, or station in Jita, and Concord is not going to do anything about it. But I mean, you know, it, it's it is good to see that there are jump freighters that are currently in service. Faxes are another story. I haven't really seen any faxes in service yet, but it has a lot to do with the fact that where do you get fax debris? Well, it comes from the brand new, uh, the brand newly released, I should say, um, in no the end, which can be spawned from the Tech 3 pirate arrays. And um, I haven't gotten an opportunity to go myself, but uh, I was fortunate enough to have a sister who has gone in a couple times in a carrier um, in um, in bird fleets. Number one, they are very, very, very profitable at the moment. Um, so, I mean, you're farming the Rex, yes. You want the Rex because you need the Rex to build the blueprints. But, I mean, as far as, as, as you know, the value of, of being out there, for a group of pilots who know what they're doing to go out there and to farm those, it is, it's worth, you know, it's literally worth billions. <laughs> it is literally worth billions, but um, Ron, have you had an opportunity to go out there yourself? I was invited very nicely by uh, Yes, which is uh, called, it was recently joined Noted to go into one of these Nihilus, and it was uh, it was interesting, it was an interesting experience. I'm, I'm always very careful, believe it or not, I'm more scared of PvE than PvP, so I'm always like very hyper paranoid with every single aspect of what can happen in one of these, right? Um, so, but it's, it's good. It's good. It's, it's cool. It's cool that it makes sense basically that caps have cap content, right? In, in PvE, because uh, these these ships are very expensive, and it's only fair that if you're, you know, you're investing so much into an asset that you try and make, here. you know, money and content out of it, right? So uh, it was it was meant to be that cap uh, nihilist came out, and uh, yeah, it, it's been fun. I don't, I, look, I'm not the best. I'm not the biggest PvE fans. So I'm not sure if I'll repeat the process quite a lot, but. Uh, certainly, I'll try and farm my own facts at some point. 
I think this would be uh, this would be well, I mean, pretty pretty. You're definitely gonna cool want. To you're, you're gonna want that when you get into you know um, more war related activities because let's face it, 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 it the reason why um, and I think we discussed that a little bit during the break. He's such an amazing character that you wonder what the game would be like without him. It's kind of um very similar to you know um, some of the other figures that we have that are very. They're funny to laugh at, but at the end of the day, they, they can be a little bit um, painful to um, to deal with. I won't say this person's name on uh, on the air, but said person has not been um, has not been uh, seen anywhere in New Eden, at least to my in my. But right now, we are working on putting you back in the mix of some of the really awesome. Greatest music. corner featuring Eden's best and brightest. Only Eden FM. And welcome to the Content Creators Corner. First and foremost, before we get into anything else, wanted to send a huge uh, shout out to my good friend, uh, Sheeft, who is now a Void pilot. He's continuing to make his new content, posting plenty of really awesome bits, and he's doing it under the Void tag. So, um, you know, I kind of wish that maybe he had joined, you know, Burr. It would have been great. But uh, it is what it is. And I, I think that the, um, the pick-me-up it, well, Void could really use the pick-me-up at the moment, uh, following that last war. But in other news, really important thing, Mario Pinterman uh, of Twix has finally developed a new Kill Mel bot. And I believe that uh, he made the announcement on yesterday saying, and I quote, it's time to say goodbye to Oxalus. We are replacing the Kill Mel bot with a brand new in-house manufactured bot. And the bot is available for the entirety of the Eve Echoes community to use. And uh, he also put some, um, some details on Reddit concerning how you can use the bot, things that we are going to post a little bit later on. Sums up the features, auto-cropping the kill mail from any resolution. Uh, so it supports tablets, phones, emulators, screenshots, you're good. Support for nine different languages, including English, Russian, Deutsch, French, Chinese, Portuguese, Spanish, Japanese, and Korean, which is an anomaly to me. Like, I, like how he coded that, I don't know. But I love Mario, so it's great. Um, different types of leaderboards, both for player and corporation. Daily, weekly, monthly, and overall. Uploading kill mails using multiple methods. You can do it through the Discord bot, or you can do it um, on the website if you want to do bulk uploads. I mean, he he really did. Uh, he really did do an amazing thing. And of course, Oxalis is designed and managed by PM Blue. And um, he's a good friend of mine, but he hasn't really had a whole lot of time uh, to play. Last time I talked to Damon Zell, he said that uh, PM is doing really well. He's just caught up in a lot of real life things. Yeah, I mean, real life happens. And uh, it's one of those, from what it sounds like, he's decided to step away from Echoes as a whole. So. No, seriously, Fair I, didn't, enough. Um, I, didn't, I didn't hear that part, uh, but um, that is that is really unfortunate. So we did need a um, we did need a um, a replacement for for that whole thing. I believe that he also. Oh, hey, thanks, Amy Van Bell has dropped in a link to the Reddit post concerning the kill bot where you can read all of these really cool details and how you can use the bot or add it to your server. Uh, I did have an opportunity to talk to Mario just a little bit on yesterday, and what he told me was that at the moment he's not charging like a subscription fee or anything like that for the bot. Maybe later on, oh, he, he said that uh, he will open the window for people to tip him with pizza and beer. So if you want to say thanks to Mario, you love the bot, um, find out where he lives and order him a pizza and a um, and a twelve pack, and I guess we'll call it good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I like the idea of paying people in uh, in pizza and beer. Can I start charging for my FC services in pizza and beer? Uh, you can talk to Meliodas about that. I'll take the pizza. I'll uh, he can you know he can keep the beer uh, for himself, I guess. But you know, if you want it, you can have it. I don't care. We can <laughs> tacos. I, I think tacos would be a better current. Let's face it, tacos are tasty. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that maybe I'm, I, I don't have much of a lust for tacos right now because I, I had them yesterday, so. Lucky. Yeah, I mean, I was going to invite you, but you were, you were like super busy with your shiny new, um, coalition that you're, you're building. Yeah. 
keeping me busy, dude. But it did fun. Very, very much <laughs> like a running NATO. So, hey, what can I say? It's fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. Either way. Um, so, the, so this bot is available now. I believe that there is also a Discord that Mario opened. If I can get someone to post a, uh, a link to that. Amy, um, there is a Discord that Mario posts where you can go over and you can report bugs that you find in the bot. And um, Mario really is a brilliant uh, programmer. So, um, yeah, I mean, much love to, um, to my fellow uh, Burr pilot for that one. I believe last week on, uh, on Echoes of New Eden, Rambo had a Benzie on the show. I didn't get an opportunity to drop in for that one. Of course, we've been all very, very, very busy. And uh, he, he, like I said, he got Captain Benzie on the show. So if you didn't get an opportunity to check that one out on, you know, live when it was going on, I really uh, would like to encourage you to check that out as I will be doing it later on this evening. It's a little bit difficult when you spend so much time, I guess, what is the word? Um, warmongering, Latara? Are we, are we, we are warmonger, yeah, something. something like that? Yes, well, something we, we spent a lines. considerable yes. amount of time uh, warmongering, so I haven't really had an opportunity to do much of anything else. Plus, um, there's the link in, um, oh, Benzie, he called in sick on last week. Damn, I, I really wanted to go and check that one out. I really wanted to hear what he had to say because the, the entirety of when the war was going on, he was just like putting out a, a flurry of, of memes and posts on Reddit about how angry he was with the developers for dropping in new capital ships rather than doing anything about small ship com uh, content, anything about industry, anything about marketing, anything about exploration, virtually everything else that, it, that it, you know, that, <laughs> that exists in EVE echoes. Um, so, I mean, I was kind of interested in hearing his thoughts. Maybe I'll invite him to New Eden FM and he can, uh, he can come on this show and give us his thoughts on all those things. For sure. I can, uh, I can reach out or any of our staff can reach out or if any of you, uh, are in one of his corps, uh, let him know we're uh, interested in, uh, speaking to him. Yes, yes, and um, and also let him know that there was absolutely no hard feelings with um, Catskull Academy becoming Tor Academy. Um, no hard feelings there. It was it was literally just business, and we were all just you know in it for the fun, and that was it. Oh yeah, it, I think we renamed every Citadel we retook. So, uh, well, we took so. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, our corpse seeker is Bell, and so everyone voted when we were uh, when we were like renaming that citadel to call it Shaped Booty. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was that was like literally instant content right there. Even though we didn't get a fight over that citadel, we we kind of got a fight, but we didn't get a fight over that citadel, and so that kind of just like made up for the entirety of the fact that we didn't really get a fight. But um, I agree, we should abduct Biz um, Benzi. Yeah, um, abduct, abduct Benzie. Uh, I, yes, Crimson Key, go and, and do it. Much love. Bring him to the show. Uh, but uh, as far as our content creators are concerned, we stay busy. I mean, you see that uh, I was a little bit busy. I was a little bit late myself getting to the show. And uh, Run asked the question, do we have a content creators tag on the official Discord? Unfortunately, no, we do not. Um, I'm not really sure what else I can do about that, to be completely honest. Can we all make a group effort to make that happen? I can we all send messages to the CC managers and say, hey, look, this is some of the best content out there for Eve Echoes. How comes the radio show does not have a content creator tag? I mean, they absolutely deserve it. I think we should do some sort of group effort. I mean, it'd be nice if you guys want to do a um, a GoFundMe in a way where it's not actually a GoFundMe, but rather a Go Petition Me. Then uh, it's it's very much welcomed. I have already filled out the forms and stuff like that. But I don't know. They they don't really they don't really see us as content because you know YouTube subscribers and stuff like that. And we're not on YouTube. And for the record, it's because I refuse to like strip all the music off the show. <laughs> And uh, as is the as is the way, it is the way. That's what makes us um, us different and unique, and we keep things fun. And if I took it all away, there would be no more uh, booty shaking moments here on the show. And uh, we can't have that now, can we? But what we yeah. can, 
Yeah, yeah, but what we can have is a State of the War address, which we will have in just a moment. Um, Ibeko's State of the War report. And, uh, <laughs> we, um, you see, we, we can't do really cool things like that if we just, like, rip out all the, all the sounds from the show. But, anyways, this is the State of the War, and as far as the war is concerned, Technically, the war is over as far as, you know, um, Bruno and, um, and Void. And uh, the rest of Pact and the rest of the universe, they really did show up in, in tremendous fashion. And it was an, a, a lot of fun. It was the most fun that I've had um, having a, va uh, a, va <laughs> a Valhalla moment. And um, they were able to summon up more people than, than I thought that they possibly could. I was just out, I was flabbergasted by how many people Void was able to bring to that fight. And to this day, it's still kind of like, you know, it, it's just like, wow, those guys can really do it. And not even a whole two weeks removed from that war, I believe that Void is in scrimmage with another group. Uh, Landria, did you did you do a little homework on that one? Well, yeah, there is a bit of a scuffle going on in Cash right now. That's Cash, not Cat. I know people across the galaxy get those two confused for some reason. But yeah, over in Cash, you you have the uh, forces of uh, Yes Please Continue, mm -hmm. and uh, their allies engaged with. Uh, ESPA and Void. Uh, so, and some very interesting things happening over there. And the uh, Yes Please Continue, uh, that is uh, Cosmic Hawk's group, yes? Yes, uh, No Fab is the uh, corp that is over there that has Sob in uh, Cash and, and uh, Cosmic Hawk Corp, so. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I mean, things going on over there. It's kind of cool. At least they're not shooting any more monkeys. <laughs> That's what got him in. Oh, the, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're... That's what got him in trouble in the first place. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, there, there have been, you know, cat fleet sighted and and lot, lot of, uh, lots of action. So there, there is definitely some some fire happening over in Cash. So. The galaxy is not all quiet. Jeez. And while we're on the subject of Yes, Please Continue, Run, did, did No have anything to do with that? Because the, when I saw that card, I, I was like, are you serious? <laughs> like, did you guys... So, it's, uh... So, Hero basically is the leader of Yes, yes uh, Please Continue. And Hero had a corp, or well, his corp was actually No, right? Uh, called VLT. Now, that corp has moved to Yes, uh, which made a lot of sense. And uh, with a downfall of RM, I guess uh, Hero grouped a number of these corps to an alliance, um, which uh, No is neutral to. It's important I, I mention that. Because obviously, No, please stop, and Yes, please continue. <laughs> Sound like quite similar names, right? Uh, the reason was, uh, we've got a, I personally got a good relation with. Uh, with a hero, as I do with other leaders of the alliances, um, and you know, he, he mentioned to me like, "I've got to create an alliance." You know, what names should I said? I just said as a joke, uh, "Yes, please continue." And he he started laughing, and I'm like, understandably, it's a joke, right? And then he just sent me the screenshot of the of the alliance formed, um, <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh fuck!" But the issue is, for some reason, my jokes with alliances names and interactions with Russians have had a history in the past in which um, when we, so No's got two alliances, No and Yet, and back in the day it was the Russians leader which is Colton uh, Konopus, and they were like, okay, uh, how do we name this alliance? And I said, well for now we don't have a name, and I said just for now I'll put as like internally we can call it Yet to be named, right? And they started laughing, and again, the same thing happened, but with a completely different person, right? And they actually made the alliance yet to be named, and that's the actual alliance to this day. So, I I've st I'm going to stop making jokes around potential naming of alliances, because really it looks stop. like... You need to stop. Yeah. You need to stop. And of stop. course, now, everyone everyone is making complete associations, and also, I can understand why, because VLT wasn't, no. Um, 
but I obviously everyone's making associations like no please stop and yes please continue are a completely allied because of the names we really aren't matter of fact uh, two of our corps CRB and dead were just fighting against them over cash um, to there's some citadels that yes has there some people and then we'll fight them the next day and vice versa right which is exactly what just happened like we fought with yes a bit at the beginning of the yeah, of the void war just at the beginning and now we're back to fighting them so um i mean so yeah fair, that's a bit of a story once everything is sorted we're gonna go back to shooting each other as well it's not like it's yeah, yeah. absolutely absolutely i'm looking forward to that actually i mean by all means come on down uh and, and shoot us or attempt to shoot us come on up come on and also come on up <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a Open invitation. reciprocal invitation <laughs> i mean i think at this point the one nice thing is that we do have like a um a, a true NPSI like server over there. So if we want to like you know drop a dual gauntlet or something, hey, hey dude, you want to come and like fight or something like that? Like yeah, yeah, let, let's let's form up fleets, let's meet up over here, let's you know let's shoot each other, let's have a good fight, and then at the end of the day, walk away and um, you know, and it was it was it was fun, and that was the that was the general vibe that I got when I was working with the uh, with the other pilots in No for a long time. Uh, I've had a long-standing relationship with No. Uh, pilots and even back when Colt was still playing the game, he wanted me to join. No, you know, and it was it was it was it was great to have that kind of respect from the people over on that side. So the war gave me an opportunity to work with people that I've kind of wanted to work with for a long time. Even though we have different alliance banners, so uh, you know some cool stuff happened. Um, Dre and I, like for example, exchange numbers, and you know, and we have a um, we have this really cool relationship and stuff. Um, and uh, not to mention some of the other line pilots that I got a chance to work with and have fun with, um, like Lash Straw, really amazing guy. I love that guy. Uh, so you know, but at the end of the day, we're, we're still going to shoot each other. It's, it's you know, completely go with that. Um, <clears throat> but um, but we can say that the war is over, kind of. And the reason is because I think four, three of the Chinese corporations. Uh, split it off from Void because they wanted to come after us. They wanted to get their revenge and all this stuff. And I believe that they formed the um, the JUI Alliance. And uh, you know they have been they have been trying to do some mild harassing in uh, in Burst Space. And it's all well you know and good. But every time they dock up, they're getting you know they're getting killed. And um, we we had I think last week I was I was told that they were kind of you know getting into some of the NDSs and you know and trying to steal some loot and stuff like that and I mean you know I mean how much loot can you really steal with an interceptor yeah I mean the most annoying part about them uh, moving into our home space of Esso well Faye uh, has been that they've been roaming us and actively shooting us whilst uh, we have a blue agreement with Void so we can get everything settled after the war and uh, there's been some absolutely, cl absolute classics uh, posted, like a uh, guy in a, I think it was a Tempest Striker, is on grid shooting one of our uh, carriers, and uh, carrier kills half of their fleet on its own, and then the support fleet shows up and wipes the rest, and the guy's <laughs> in local going, don't shoot, I'm friend! Oh my god! It's like well, you, you were very happy to shoot at our uh, shoot at us whilst blue, so you can lose that ship. <laughs> and and that's that's the thing. That is the biggest issue that we've been having over there. It's not the fact that they want, that they're fighting us, right? I mean, it's fine. You want to come over to first space. You want to fight. You want to do some gate camping. It's it's great. You know, we will respond in turn. But there are some of the pilots, the uh, the plus eight pilots. You know, the Chinese pilots in in void that are in Void, they are blue, because at the moment we're trying to get things settled with Void, we're doing cleanup in their space, we're blowing up some of the citadels that, um, you know, that we, we, we downgraded and stuff, and, you know, we're trying to handle all of, the, of these things, and, uh, and so, you know, we're not shooting Void and they're not shooting us. But then, you know, some of their blue pilots are coming in and, and, and trying to get around that, and if they get caught, it's like, no, 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 you know, we're, we're blue, we're blue, we're blue, it's like... All right, so finally, I can say this openly, um, Burr pretty much, or Burr administration just said, look, if they are from Void and they're in our space, just shoot them. 
because they have no right to be there anyways. So that blue status is not going to protect them. It protects them in void space. We're not going to shoot them. But if they come to, you know, if they come to, to birth space and they are working with members of this spinoff group that wants to get their revenge, it's perfectly fine if they want to fight with us, but they're going to get shot along with their friends. So, I mean, the state of the war is that they want to continue this war and it's fine, but, you know, just it, it's not a get out of jail free card. And I, I don't know why they felt that it would be, but. I mean, the moral of the story is if blues are doing sus things in your space, just kill them. Pretty much. I mean, we've killed some of our own pilots for doing sus things in our space. <laughs> that explains why Mackenzie kills me every time I undock at home. Oh, man. You said that you were going to keep that between us. Well, you just made it public, so I was just going to you know, just roll in with the punch. I didn't make anything public. You're oh. the one that, that basically told people, uh, you know what, it's fine, whatever. I I I I, uh, I can't say any more without my lawyer present. Um, to buy representation, uh, any takers? <laughs> yeah, as it turns out, I'm a tyrannical dictator, and all the members of my corporation are are just looking for the ripe opportunity to overthrow me. The cooing in Bell would be so easy. It's like, yo, Kenzie, I'm taking charge, and she'd be. Uh, Okay, yeah, here's the Discord role. Uh, here's the keys to the uh, corporation in game. Uh, see ya. Pretty much, dude. I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna do work, <laughs> it's it's fine. Like seriously, Mel uh, makes the joke all the time about how like pe everyone wants to coop him, but whenever he says, "Okay, you want to become alliance leadership," they're like, "Uh, that's okay." <laughs> it's like it's it's brilliant. But no, I mean, leadership in in any game is is work, and I'll, I'll tell here. anyone the same thing. It's it's work. If you want to do work, then. Sure, here's the hat. You know, call me when you get when you get tired. <laughs> um Oh, talk, talking hats, I've got to ask, I've got to ask. Run, uh, is it confirmed that Tahini is getting Betty's hat? Um it looks uh, highly probable. Um addresses were sent and uh Benzi uh, of course will uh, I think will honor that. And I'll say a couple of things with regards to the Benzi hat. It's become quite the, um, the relay baton in New Eden of uh, of wars, and and uh, it's become quite a prestigious uh, asset. And I think they should introduce it in in game as as some form of like you know imagine that you leave Benzi's hat in your most prized uh, citadel, T three citadel, in your hardest location to get right, and you can only get that that Benzi hat if you actually toast us and take over that citadel, and therefore it is kind of kind of like a declaration of war. Sorry, of winning the war. Um, so, so the physical hat, the real one, because like, here, you know, there was a lot of discussion internally, and I said, look, and it, the, the, the conclusion is that we wanted the real hat, the real thing, you know, the real worn hat, because that's the that's that's the way that it's not just an Amazon purchase of the of a similar hat. You actually want the real deal, you know. You want those, you know, that uh, top of the head Benzi kind of vibe on that hat. So. Um, I think I think uh, Tahini will get it eventually, and and contrary, and I, I don't want to don't want to open a can of worms here, but uh, a previous war was won by No uh, and SHH, and uh, in this case, the leader of Gen at the time had ownership of the of that hat because of previously winning a war, and uh, she chose to never uh, give that hat as a sort of like act of um, you know I don't know courtesy you could say. Um, you know, handing off the hat to to the winner, and we want to follow that um, that uh, kind of was a uh, procedure or whatever you want to call it, uh, and and therefore, as soon as we receive the hat, knows no will happily engage in war with whoever proposes war, and if we lose, we will pass the hat over as a, as an act uh, and as a courtesy and as a sort of uh, I don't know what my, sorry I'm a bit hungover today I don't know what the right word is in terms of um, Anyway, just call it trophy. procedure. Trophy of war. Say again? It's a trophy. Yeah, what? yeah no, no, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad that that when, you know, that when, when I've lost wars in the past, people didn't recover or didn't request my mask off my face. That would have been kind of like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing it, but, but, fuck, man. 
<laughs> yeah, seriously, my, my masks are original. Like, I, um, I craft every single one of them by hand. So, um, I guess that if you, um, if, you, if you truly beat me in a war, then I guess you get my mask. <laughs> I mean, Mackenzie, it's been two already. So, I think at this stage, we probably should ask for your mask. I'm not, I'm not trying to be cocky here, but Good that does look. look like a pretty cool mask, huh? I mean... <laughs> You're just I'm, inviting me there. You, you, you put I it mean, on the table for me, pretty much. To be, I mean, to be fair, when uh, when that that clusterfuck happened in Genesis Federation, that was a clusterfuck, dude. But I mean, you do, you are, you are, you are correct. You should have just asked for those as like as the the you know, as a um as a token of surrender back then, but you didn't ask for you know any type of recompense for if you won the war and that was the thing just like you didn't ask mama sars or anyone else you know there was just like so much hate in that war that no one wanted to talk to each other so if you were to say go to war with burr i would say okay well if you make it as a declaration that if we lose this war you get my mask then i guess that i'm complying with that right I mean, it's, it's a respect thing, and I'm actually willing to put my fate in the hands of my pilots. Right now, well, it's speaking nice. of, of Benji's hat, uh, Captain Benji's hat has actually joined the uh, in-game uh, New Eden FM fleet and is in local with us in uh, Kari. So, uh, the hat is ahoy there. there, Captain Benji's hat. The hat is here. The hat is Captain there. Benji's hat is <laughs> It's here in system the hat with us. There, I love it. But um, uh, the, the question the hat is, is here. Benzie's is Benzie's hat still in get? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, let's let's see here. Uh, I Cap don't think so. Captain Benzie's hat is in a corporation right now. At left a hundred and sixty days ago, but um, yeah. There we go. Uh, the return of uh, Captain Benji's hat that was just uh, <laughs> declared lost after the uh, <laughs> yeah. the uh, the uh, fall of Genfed has uh, mysteriously ankle with us in uh, Kari. So uh, uh, Captain Benji's hat actually wants Tahini to accept. Uh, his uh, corp request. So apparently the hat's trying to come home to no. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my yeah, gosh. I, am, I cannot, I can, I cannot make this shit up. I cannot. <laughs> that's, 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, uh, drop this into, uh. That's a big so instead of having it as an in-game okay. item, what we can do is have uh, the actual player of Benzie's hat, right, being uh, each alliance. And <laughs> well, apparently, uh, apparently so. I mean, so, uh, technically I'm speaking. Just, okay, I'm gonna drop this into uh, the sound of us. As far as like rite of passages and everything are concerned, I think that all the alliances have like some kind of figure that's like that, right? Like in the case of uh, of Tahini. He has the anonymous mask, right? And that's that's his that's his signature. Over in um over in, in Void, it is, you know, Benzi is that icon figure of Void. So if you beat Void, it would be like, okay, well well fine, you know, you, you get a hat. But I, I don't think that being another organization that previously beat Void would get you a hat. In similar fashion, if you were to beat no, or beat, you know, Burr, it's like, okay, so, I mean, you have a lot of figures, but I'm a content creator in, in Burr. So you'd, you'd have the right to ask me for my mask, but not Benzie's hat if we were to, like, beat Void. I, yeah, well, that. I think this gives a challenge. I think this gives a challenge in the future. You never know how things revolve in you. Eden. And I think if, uh, if Noah and Burr were to engage in war, we've certainly got some, uh, some items, some accessories that we would probably like from each other, right? In this case, uh, maybe uh, uh, Mackenzie's mask or Tahini's mask, and in this case, uh, Benzie's hat, right? So, uh, the, the, you know, these things can, can cause content and engage content. So, yeah, I'm going to go so, ahead yeah. and 
you know, I, I have complete and total faith in my people. So, um, like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna go oh, ahead uh, and do myself a favor and not even like make a backup mask because I think I, I respect no run, but I, I think that I think that my boys and girls got it. That's cool to so, believe uh, in, our, in our arena. So the next war, it, it's going to be uh, War of the Accessories. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds quite not that impressive, right? It sounds very uh, not, not so crazy. Actually, can you can I do a photo? Can I give a shout out to two people on on? Of course. One is uh, Klansman. I see. Him. Uh, uh, we've missed Klansman a lot in in no. He's taken a little break. I know it's just a little break because he had to do some things in real life, and I know he'll return. I know. We miss him a lot, and he's been a pivotal part of No Please Stop from the beginning, MP. And also, I want to give a big shout out to Devastavia, who um, we had a member of Pew who, from, from Space Cast, sorry, uh, Devastavia from Space Cast. We had a member from Pew who had a very series of unfortunate events. Many of you might know him called Linguini, and uh, his, uh, he had a, basically some pretty bad stuff happen in real life. Which put him back significantly, and he, you know, he was in a very bad financial position, which he was like sleeping in the streets of where he lived, and uh, you know, we did a campaign to to fund and to help uh, him get back on track, and it looks like he is. He's got a job now, and he's got a car, and he now has like somewhere to sleep that he's renting. So, and and it's it's been in part thanks to people like the who who. who uh, made a very nice donation to, to that. I just wanted to give a big shout out. And obviously, I just want to let them say, you know, that uh, uh, no, please stop as an alliance. Uh, I don't know uh, David Stavey too well, but him or her, uh, you know, we owe you a favor at some point. So just, just reach out at whatever point. If not, at some point, we're just going to send you a, a gift as a, as a very heartwarming thank you for uh, helping uh, one of our pilots out on propaganda on reddit we'll say some things to each other but at the end of the day we, we kind of fight like estranged siblings right um but when stuff happens people um people tend to um to come together uh very admirably and uh i think that that is that is very 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 important and um we actually did on the subject of people coming together and it's something I was going to do a bit later on in this broadcast, but we did lose a pilot. Rather, uh, our friends in, in TSC uh, lost a pilot, and um, I believe that he passed away due to uh, colon cancer, from what I uh, from what I was told by by Rose. And um, he was a bomber pilot. That was that was his his ship. You know, he was a hound pilot. So. They memorialized him on Friday night. I was not able to be there on, um, I wasn't able to be there myself because of course I'm a DJ and I, and I work on, on Friday nights. But I understand that the, the sending off ceremony was, was quite wonderful. There was also a battle royal that took place afterwards. Uh, and um, yeah, it was just fantastic to see our community once again um, passing, um, <clears throat> once again, well, coming together to, uh, to honor a, uh, a fallen member of our community. I have unfortunately had the unpleasant experience of having to, I guess, memorialize at least, okay, it's, it was pan, uh, pancreatic cancer, according to, um, according to uh, what one of his, uh, his comrades has said. I've unfortunately had um, the unfortunate um, experience of being in this situation at least three times since uh, since starting this game and even since starting this radio show. The first time we held an episode in full um, memorial of, I believe, uh, Draco 68, and he was a pilot in Pantheon. So that episode was pretty much completely devoted to him. Uh, I did get an opportunity to talk to um, talk to his his um, his representative, and um, when they are ready, once things have kind of like settled down, um, we can memorialize him properly on the show. But I know that normally we keep things pretty much you know it's always music or it's always conversation. Um, if we could have just a moment of silence in remembering this fantastic pilot. And what he did for our community, not just his own alliance, um, would appreciate and thank you for that.
or with the TSC members and uh, see if we can, you know, just do something really proper for, um, for Mickey. Um, and uh, from what, um, it's, it's really cool to see that his son is, um, is now flying um, along with you guys uh, in honor of his father. So that's, that's fantastic. And it never really gets any easier doing this kind of thing. And I, I think I forget sometimes how many people uh, play this game and, you know, they're, they're playing it as a way to cope with terminal illness. So that's, that's a thing. Um, right. Sorry, please repeat. I'm sorry, Mirage. Uh, welcome to the studio. I couldn't really hear you. Oh, I was just saying, yes, there are lots of terminal pilots out there, but uh, you, you had me. I was kind of like uh, moved by what you said, so I kind of uh, muttered it out. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm terribly sorry um, for, for that. No, you, you moved me so much I could barely speak into the microphone. I was struck deaf, dumb, and blind thinking all the... Yes. yes. Anyways, go ahead, Alondra. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, you know, as much as like we complain, at, at least I most definitely complain about the devs. In fact, the fact that I complain about them is part of the reason why they don't want to give me a content creator's badge. But you'd think that they would want to because technically if they did, I couldn't complain about them as much. But either way, realistically speaking, we complain about the devs, but we stick around for our communities. And... Um, it's um it's it's a little hard to kind of like describe that but uh, thank you guys for um for for giving a moment of silence um in in remembrance and um with that uh i suppose that we also thank the people who showed up for today's broadcast uh yeah i see clansman even though clansman uh quote unquote quit it broke my heart that uh that like literally the the first time that burr and no teamed up and we were doing some content i'm like hold on a second okay we got dragon viper got drea there's rep some of my other friends wait semper fire dog wait where's clansman and then someone was like clansman quit i'm like please tell me you're joking they're like no, Clansman quit. I'm like shit, <laughs> you know, it it's um it sucked, it really did suck, and um okay so I'm being told that Mario is asking about the show, uh is if Mario's on the Discord already then we can just give him um we can give him perms, and he can just um he can join us. Give me a moment. That was the going that was the literally the going theme for that entire last war, and um. The way that that whole thing started, Amy decided to drop, uh, to start some, she started like ass shaking during um, the radio show, like the same one that uh, of the week that uh, Burr and No formed that coalition to war with Void. And Rep liked it, so he took this back and he said, drop a booty in local. And after that, it all just went straight to shit. Right. So, I remember so yeah. this day. Mm -hmm. Yep. One wonderful day. But, I mean, it was a lot of fun for us. Uh, but either way, I'm going to contact Mario um, a little bit later on and see if he would like to come on the show and talk about his new bot and some of the things that he's doing with it. And, uh, you know, and pretty much uh, what he would like to talk to the community about. Uh, but I think that for now, that pretty much wraps up today's show because i mean personally speaking i would like to get back to my uh alleged crabbing um <laughs> and uh, i'm sure that there are people here that would like to get to their alleged crabbing as well so i mean I've, i was just pvp and i literally just killed the stratios <laughs> i mean i mean it's you know crabbing this does not surprise me it's, it's not surprised surprise either, me. to be completely honest. It's just what it is. Is, is it crabbing to kill crabs? Is that technically crabbing? I mean, if it's an like, Astero, like it's probably not crabbing. crabbing. It's probably not a crab. If it's an Astero, that thing... Stratios. Oh, it's a Strat... Oh, shit. Okay, yep. 
<laughs> yep. Yep. Rip. Okay. Well. Rip crab. Oh, well. All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to this episode of New Eden FM. We'll be back on next week. And um, here's wishing well to Tahini. And thank you again, Ron, for filling in for him. I know that um, that Tahini really wanted to be on the show this week. And uh, because of uh, uh, extenuating circumstances, he was not able to make this one. But we love having No on the show. And uh, hopefully we can encourage Void and, um, and OG to, like, you know, to, to crawl out of their crab shell and just come out and talk to us about themselves. <laughs> Yeah, pleasure to be here as usual. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Thank you for having me, the kind bitch. Of course, of course. Shake you it know, with you. mystical. Oh yeah, I, love hugs I, and kisses. Go I, ahead, go ahead, do it. I got, I got, I got a boob in local. Do it. Mm -hmm. I, I have yeah, to okay. boob in local. It's a contractual obligation, being <laughs> a, a hidden like... CEO of uh, boob. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. I think it's one of those things I got, I got to do. So, it's like, a pain. Local. Like she getting honk. paid to boop in local. I mean, Honk was trying to get like paid to honk in local back uh, during the Pantheon days. And I think that the, the biggest problem that was debated during the meeting was, well, how many honks do we get per hour? And I think it was something crazy like <laughs> one or two. And so uh, Sun Banana was like, well, you know, and JFAC was like, that's not nearly enough honks per hour. They're, they're fired. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, ask Be Ross. Careful. The discussion really did happen. How many honks can we get per hour? And uh, the rate was too low for the amount of this they were asking for, so we, we kind of just scrapped it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like in the idiocracy. Why do you keep saying Boxy by Carlos Jr.? Because oh I get paid for every time I do it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Shake your ass with mystical. Turn it up. Check it out. Warp drive active.